Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 422 for Wednesday, February 8th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome back to Business Brain, or welcome to Business Brain. If this happens to be your entrance into our world, we are the show where we take our business brains and apply them to every aspect of our lives, business, personal life, whatever, because there's so much to be learned from our business brains and how we all apply them and we can each learn from each other. And that's what we love to do here. We, uh, yeah, here we are back here in Durham, New Hampshire. Did I ever leave? I don't know. Uh, I'm Dave (laughs) Hamilton. In Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. We do love to business brain out here and we do learn a lot from, uh, from everybody, from each other, and from our uh, guests. We have a great guest coming up in a few weeks and uh, in the restaurant business. And oh. we get some great feedback on the uh, the bite-sized episodes where we've been releasing a couple a week, which has been, uh, I would say, pretty successful. I started don't, as an experiment. Yeah, I don't disagree. I, I think it's been it's been going great. We have uh, we have a great piece of feedback from listener David. Uh, about pricing products, which is something we mentioned in a recent episode. He says, I've always been a cost plus kind of person. That could be because that's how my dad started this business that he now runs. He says, but to me, it makes sense. If something costs me $50 to make, then I probably want to sell it for 75 or a hundred or something more than 50. But if the market will only pay $40 for it, then I know that's not something I want to sell. Some might say I'm leaving money on the table if the market was willing to pay 200 for it, but I'd rather be fair instead of gouging someone just because they'd pay for it. This is interesting, especially the first part of it about looking at, and I know this is super simple when we, when he puts it this way, but this idea of, look, if it costs you 50 bucks to make it, to produce it, to generate the product, whatever it is, and the market's only going to pay $40 for it. Don't sell it. Don't make it. Don't sell it. You know, you know yeah, that like be involved in that area. Right? Yeah. Get get out of that line of business or don't enter that line of business. And I know that this is super obvious when we say it this way, but I also know that it's really easy to get stuck in the minutia of, you know, creating a product and you get emotionally attached to it maybe. And then you're like, oh, we'll find a way to make money from it. And I've, cause I've done this. I've, I've been in that world where it's like, well, but if, if you, you know, I, I, I often think I need to be, I either need to hire a consultant for my business or I need to be my own consultant for my business, looking at it objectively and saying, you're losing money on this. Stop doing it. Y- you know, um, yeah, it's yeah. That, that idea I, of, of sunk time, sunk cost. You know, we spent all yes. the time to develop this, but it's really a bad idea for us to sell it because the market won't pay what we need them to. Don't do it. Just move yeah, on. Yeah, I, I have. Yeah. And I, and I, I love the simplification of it. Being able to think like that is yes. important. Yeah, yeah that's selling, the business brain part of this, yes, right? Yes, because yeah, you want to be able to look at your, especially if you're in well, whatever business you are. Uh, it, you know, I just had a guy come to my house and quote out refinishing tile floors, and he knew exactly what it cost him per square foot. Yes. Didn't matter what any other variable. He goes, well, the cost is four dollars, and this and that. You know, and, and he knew exactly what was going on. Similar to what, what brilliant. Uh, yep, what Dave's doing. I have a little different take on it. Um, if your, um, business is varied with lots of different pieces and parts and services, I think there's going to be some of those parts, services, whatever, that you're not going to make money on. I think it's just the nature of the beast, but you have to balance out things that you are going to hit home runs with that you're going to really do really well on with some things, hopefully not as many, uh, that you're going to. I mean, it's that loss leader. I was just going to say, you're, you're, thing, right? you're describing the concept of a loss leader, yeah, the thing that brings right. people in the door. And certainly yes. if that is the reason to offer it, then there is a reason to consider it. But yeah. simply having put in the time to figure out how to do it is not enough. There needs to be a, a business justification you got it. For, yes. for putting it out there. And if it's a loss leader and you can prove to yourself uh, yeah. With metrics that yes, we're offering this. We're either you know a, it, we're either cash flow neutral or cash flow negative on it. 
But we can see that, you know, of, of the every 10 customers that I bring in the door with this, three of them will go on to buy within the next three months, will go on to buy something that we make triple our, yeah, our normal right. net on. And so compli- it, if, yeah, even right for the when, when the leader. sale happens. Yes. Yeah. You may sell like, for example, uh, with one of my previous companies that, you know, eventually phones were just driving the repair business. Right. Sure. And it was so competitive in the beginning, you could make great money, but it was during this weird time when phones were subsidized. So people were like, well, the phone's only worth, you know, a hundred bucks. You're like, well, actually <laughs> the phone's like worth 500 bucks or now it's a thousand. Yeah. Uh, and ultimately it became, you know what? The only thing we make money on now is the screen protector we sell you for 20 bucks after we repair the phone. Amazing. Time to get out of that business because it's too much work and too much liability for working on an expensive piece of equipment. And the only thing you're making money on is a piece of plastic or glass that you're putting on top of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, but David's right. And, and being able to monitor it and to your point, Dave, measure it. Ha- you have to be able to look at the metrics and cause you know, that individual product may really stand out as, oh, we're losing money every single time. But if you can link it to an, another revenue event where you're making up for it, it uh, may make sense. Oh, then it makes sense. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, David, that enters you into the drawing for uh, the uh, 2023 drawing for a MacBook Air. He sent his nice. email into feedback at businessbrain.show. That's where you can send your email in. He, uh, he had another thing I wanted to talk about here. He says, regarding chat GPT and your recent conversation about how much it's worth, he says, I haven't had the chance to try it yet, but I've certainly heard about it. It would seem to me that some of what it could do would be comparable to a degree to what a virtual assistant could do. I could say to a VA, write me up a sales email to send to all of our customers, and they could do that in a couple of hours. Or I could ask chat GPT to do the same thing. How would the results compare? Which would be better? Not having used either, he says, I can't say. But if I had enough appropriate work that ChatGPT could do and it did an adequate job, that does raise its value. He says, I don't think it would replace a VA yet, but if it could reduce the number of hours that I spent per month on VA, if I had one, it might seem like a real bargain at even $50 or $100 a month. I thought that was an interesting... uh, Perspective, David, especially from someone he's only heard about, uh, you know, how it's how it can be used. I in reading this, though, I had one of these aha moments. And I I think perhaps we squandered a term, Shannon, not you and me, but us as a society. This idea of a virtual assistant. I'm, I, you've heard me ramble on the show about how I I hate using the term virtual to discuss a real human. It, we're talking about remote assistance with, with this. Yes. Chat GPT and its ilk, Google released, a, well, yep. it did a, a private BARD. beta of their BARD thing, from, which is based on their Lambda technology. And to be, to be for, just so all of us have the history, Chat GPT was created by OpenAI after reading Google's white paper that described Google's Lambda engine. So this is not Google's response to chat GPT, at least not in a fundamental way. Um, This is very much chat GPT is a response to Google's Lambda, but it seems to me that these types of engines might be the thing that we should have called virtual assistants because they are actually virtual. They aren't, Right. You know, I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I have this issue calling yeah. real humans. No, I, virtual, I get it. And so. it makes, it but, makes yeah. sense. And uh, David, I would encourage you to go try it out, use it, sign up for an account. They, they did land on this $20 per month pro uh, account, which I think is just a bargain. Oh, and, I agree. Uh, yeah. You know, we've been using it to post, uh, if you go up to, uh, businessbrain.show or even in the show notes on your podcast app, you'll see, uh, an article, that's related to the topic that we discussed that time and we're just trying it out. And we, we, the thing I like the way we're doing it is we are tagging it as an AI created article related to this certain topic. Um, and I think that's, uh, it's, it's interesting. We're just playing around with it, experimenting it. I, I want to make it part of my workflow and see if it saves me time. And uh, so far I think it has. Hey, 
If you're looking to get money for your business, we've got a show for you. Make sure you tune in to the Business Credit and Financing Show hosted by funding expert Ty Crandall. Ty has helped over 50,000 entrepreneurs get capital. And during each episode of the show, he interviews industry experts and gurus about how to easily get the capital you need to grow your business and the strategies you can deploy to grow your company faster. Ty covers topics like how to get business credit with no personal guarantee or credit check, how to get money to start a business, and how to get approved for the most money in the best terms. So if you want to tap into business credit and financing to grow faster, visit creditsuite.com and click resources and then select the podcast. Then choose your preferred platform to subscribe and listen in on previous episodes. Head there now and tell them we sent you to get your free step-by-step business credit building blueprint. And our thanks to Ty for doing this swap with us. All right. We got uh, another email into feedback at businessbrain.show from listener Jeff, who says, uh, thanks for the recent episode about LLCs versus sole proprietorships. I have been talking to my accountant who seems to have an aversion to LLCs. In any case, I just wanted to mention that it's common in conversations that I have with folks that they often think there is a tax advantage to having an LLC, but there is not. Just might be worth mentioning as that seems to be a common misconception. You know, when I got this, when I first saw this email, Shannon, I thought, well, wait, no, 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 no. Of course there's a, and then I paused and I was like, oh no, it's a pass through entity. Um, it, yes, it files its own tax return, but it doesn't pay any taxes. It passes through any profits or losses to the members based on their percentage of ownership. And then you inherit those through a schedule K one. Usually if it's organized as a partnership, uh, if it's yep. got multiple members, uh, and, and then you, you know, you file that on your tax return. If you have a single member LLC, it actually is treated just like a sole proprietorship in most cases. And again, all of what we're saying here, you know, comes with the asterisk, please check with your accountant because we are not CPAs. And so we therefore cannot give you actual advice, but we can share what we know and what we've experienced. Uh, I don't think he's wrong. I Like I went looking yeah. for all the tax benefits of an LLC and, and there aren't any. I, I know that there are liability benefits to an LLC, yes, for sure. which is great. Like, you know, if I... If we, if, well, let, let's put it this way. We have an LLC for this podcast. If we give you terrible advice in such a way that you can blame us for it and you can assign damages to it, you can't, unless, unless it can be proven that we acted with malice and intention uh, to mislead you, which I can tell you over the years, we certainly have not. Uh, we might be idiots, but we're not yeah. bad idiots. Uh well, yeah, then, it, it, then you can you can't touch our houses. You can just yeah, touch right. the the assets of of the business, which for this show happens to be called Deals on the Web LLC. Which uh, you long know, story, long story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good story. And yes. we've talked about it here on the show before. Yes. But uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, do you uh, disagree? I because I, I well, think he's right. I think no. I, is, I, I yeah. I don't. I don't just dis- disagree. We were just talking about uh, chat. GPT a minute ago. So I ran it up the flagpole or the chat GPT poll just yeah. to see, you know, first I asked, Hey, are there tax advantages to LLC? Well, uh, open AI and chat GPT says, yes, there are tax advantages. And, and does uh, it give LLC. you any specifics? Well, well, and then it says, you know, uh, you know, it LLCs are considered a pass through entity, meaning that the company itself does not pay taxes on its income. Instead, the profits and loss are passed through to the individual owners report the income on their personal tax returns, right. as we've discussed. Then they said, this can offer potential tax savings as the owner may be able to take advantage of deductions and lower tax rates. However, it's important to note that the specific tax benefits of an LLC will vary depending on a number of factors, including the number of owners, their respective ownership percentages, and the type of business being conducted. And even chat- That's a non-answer. It is a word salad. <laughs> yes, answer. that is word uh, salad. And then, of course, they tell you, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, consult with a tax professional because Jet GPT doesn't want to give you bad advice either. So I asked it, we'll expand on this sentence. This can offer potential tax savings, yada, yada, yada. And again, it kind of gave me this word salad thing. 
they can take advantage of various tax deductions, such as those business expenses hmm. that can, re- uh, those four business expenses that can reduce your taxable income. But I'm not sure you can't do that as a sole prop. Uh, and then chat GPT falls back to comparing it to a C corp, which, uh, you know, can be taxed twice once at corporate level. And again, on the individual level. Um, so I, I would have to agree that, uh, it'd be hard pressed to, to list a few specific tax benefits out of there you know, yeah, uh, from that entity. So yeah. I, I would agree. Yeah. Would agree. Yeah. So thank you for that, Jeff. Uh, of course that also enters you into the drawing here. So see how easy yeah. it is, folks. Feedback at businessbrain.show. That's, uh, awesome. that's all you got to do. Love it. That's all you got to yeah. do. Love your questions because we get to learn about it. We get to talk, find out what we are uh, right about and, and what we are wrong about. And so especially what we're wrong about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Make sure, like, like we've said many times in this episode, feedback at businessbrain.show. Shannon, uh, you, you had an idea about uh, a topic for a future show. You want to tell people what that is? Maybe they can yeah, send so, in some uh, of their stuff. Next week, we're going to talk about this concept of a conversational enterprise, uh, working on communicating in, amongst remote locations. And I, I have a bunch of questions, and I have some things I want to share with you, so I'm looking forward to talking about it next week. If you have comments or questions about uh, communicating remotely with employees and things like that, please let us know. Feedback at businessbrain.show. That's all it is. Feedback at businessbrain.show. We'll say it one last time. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Stay safe out there and uh, keep living that charmed life, eh? See you next time.